Oi, gente. Eu sou Ivan Ivanovitch, instrutor de fotografia das oficinas de cultura de Paranaguá. Essa é a nossa oficina de fotografia. É a 18 18ª, 18ª vídeo, 18ª aula que vocês estão assistindo, que eu estou gravando para vocês. Hoje a gente se programou para falar sobre um grande fotógrafo do século XX, é, tido como o principal fotógrafo de guerra da, da história, né, da fotografia, que é o Robert Capa. É, o Robert Capa é um húngaro que ficou conhecido principalmente por registrar os conflitos, né, quase todos, ou diversos conflitos, diversas guerras que ocorreram aí no seu tempo de carreira, que foi dos anos 30 até os anos 50. E o principal diferencial dele é que ele foi um fotógrafo muito corajoso, que, que fazia os registros com lentes é, normais. O que significa isso? Ele não usava grande coisa de zoom. Né, ele usava lentes, é, digamos, aí com, né, com uma distância focal aí que é considerada normal, de 25, 35, etc. E isso quer dizer que o fotógrafo tem que se meter lá no meio da batalha como se fosse um soldado. E ele, e ele se sentia né, como um soldado. Né, ele ia para a guerra como um soldado. Só que no lugar da, da metralhadora ou da... Né, da baioneta, sei lá do que fosse, ele levava a câmera fotográfica. Tá? É, aqui eu peguei a, a, a biografia dele que está no Wikipedia, fácil de achar, Robert Capa não tem nenhuma, nenhuma dificuldade na grafia aqui, é Robert Capa mesmo, tá? é, C-A-P-A. O verdadeiro nome dele é Andre Friedman. Né? Ele nasceu em Budapeste, em 1913, e morreu em 1954. Tá? É, a foto dele mais famosa, a primeira foto dele mais famosa, é da Guerra Civil Espanhola. Vocês já vão ver aí uma série de fotos dela. Né? É, o, o, Robert, o Robert Capa, o Andrew Friedman, passou a utilizar esse nome, Robert Capa, foi uma invenção, uma invenção dele e da namorada, né, é, né, a primeira mulher fotojornalista, né, a Gerda Taro, que, foi, que era companheira dele. Né, então, digamos que o Robert Capa tenha sido um pseudônimo que os dois ali inventaram ali para conseguir se destacar aí nesse meio fotográfico. Essa Gerda Taro morreu muito cedo, ela, ela morreu já atropelada numa, numa dessas guerras aí. É... Ó. 1937, na Guerra Civil Espanhola. Né? Daí que tem a, 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 vida, a, a, a vida toda, um pouco da carreira, né? É... Eu vou colocar um vídeo, e, e, o vídeo é muito longo, é um documentário que passou na TV Cultura Aberta aqui do Brasil. Tá? E eu vou parar o vídeo em alguns momentos para comentar algumas coisas para vocês. Não vai dar para passar o vídeo todo nessa aula, o vídeo tem, é, se não me engano, 35 ou 40 minutos, mas o começo é bem impactante, principalmente para quem assistiu... É, o Resgate do Soldado Ryan, né, que é um filme é, norte-americano que fala, que começa com a invasão da Batalha da, da Normandia, né, que é o dia D que os, que os, que os aliados invadem a, a Normandia, que é o norte da França, ali, para combater os nazistas. Né, e essas cenas do... do do dia D são muito fortes, né? O único registro real que existe são algumas fotos do capa, do capa naquele dia, 
do, Franz, do Robert Capra. Já ia confundindo com o cineasta, que é Franz Capra, que é outro cara. Vamos lá, Robert Capra. É... É, o diretor do filme, né, o diretor do filme é, O Resgate do Soldado Ryan, ele comenta que ele é, criou a cena, aquela cena inicial do filme, que é o desembarque do dia D da Normandia, baseado nas fotos de Robert Capa. Tá? Então, eu deixo vocês com um trecho inicial desse documentário. It wasn't pretty. It was kind of ugly and stark and immediate. The pictures were all about chaos and madness. I did everything I could to my camera to get June 6, 44 to look exactly like the Bob Kappa photographs. The war correspondent has his stake, his life, in his own hands. And he can put it on this horse or that horse, or he can put it back in his pocket at the very last gamble. I'm a gambler. I decided to go in with Company E in the first wave. Robert Kappa taking pictures was his way of fighting the war against fascism. Instead of carrying a gun, he carried a camera. His works, I think, taught us a lot. Because, uh, you know, he dealt with a very cruel circumstance. He wasn't just an observer. He was really as humane as maybe they don't come like anymore. He really liked people, and I think this is also why people liked him. Robert Kappa was born in Paris at the age of 22. He had arrived a few years earlier, a refugee from Nazi Germany. Before he became Robert Kappa, his name was Andre Friedman. This photograph, published in a Berlin journal, was taken in Budapest during a demonstration against the Hungarian dictator, Niklas Horty. One of the demonstrators was 17-year-old Andre Friedman. He was wounded by a policeman's saber and later arrested. In the big square police headquarters, Hordy's chief of police whistled Beethoven's fifth while beating up long-haired men. I was a young man of 17 with very long hair. The next morning, the police commissioner called my mother and told her that if I left Hungary in 24 hours, certain questions would not be asked. The next day, he left for Berlin. He went to Berlin in order to learn that which is new. Berlin was the great attraction, socially, economically, politically. It was dynamic. Things were happening. The Nazis were not yet in power when Kappa arrived in Germany. Berlin was the cultural capital of the world. Kappa enrolled in journalism classes at the Radical School for Political Studies. He wanted to become a newspaper reporter to fight fascism with words. He moved into a sleazy boarding house and scraped by with a small allowance. When his money ran out, his landlady evicted him. I had always loved the feel of rain on my face. But now the rain, without touching my face, went right to my shoes. I had never thought that poverty had anything to do with shoes. 
Now when I look at poor people, I glance at their feet. For me, he was Bundy. We called him Bundy Never Kappa because it was much later uh, came this name. Eva Beshnio was a childhood friend from Budapest. She had just opened her own photography studio in Berlin. He came and uh, visited me, and he said to me, is photography a nice uh, profession, just like this? And I said, Bundy, you can't speak about photography on this manner. Photography was flourishing in Berlin. Some of the best photojournalists were represented by an agency called Defot, which was run by a Hungarian. I brought him to Defot, and I said, I, I have here a very nice boy, very intelligent and, and uh, smart. Can't you give him some job? He said, okay, let him come. I brought uh, Kappa to photography, and I'm very proud of it. Kappa ran errands and worked in the darkroom for a year. Then an extraordinary opportunity arose. Leon Trotsky was going to speak in Copenhagen, and all of the Defot photographers were busy. Kappa said, let me go. I, I make a photograph of him. Let me try. And the photographs were published to great success, not only in Germany, but elsewhere. Kappa was on the brink of a great career at the age of 18, but his success in Germany was doomed. Just a few months later, Hitler seized power, and Kappa wisely left the country. It was not possible to stay. For him, he was Jewish, he was leftist, no. And he, the whole day fought where, where he were, was finished because it was too leftist. Kappa was a displaced person all of his life. He was looking at life through that part, that eye. What he was, he never forgot who he was, where he came from. I think he had, as you say, a chip on his shoulder. Andre Friedman grew up in Budapest, a city divided by wealth, class, and geography. As a boy, he roamed through the graceful streets of Buda, where wealthy aristocrats whiled away the hours in elegant cafes. Then he would head home across the Danube River to the bustling district of Pest, where his parents ran a custom tailoring shop. Their modest apartment was crowded with workers making stylish clothes for the rich people of Buda. The business person of our family was my mother, who really was a very hardworking lady. And my father was a very light-hearted fellow. He didn't really believe that uh, work was a very essential part of a Hungarian man's life. And came around 6 p.m., he would want to slip out of the house and go and play cards. On the Pest side stood the Café Modern, where the tailors of Budapest held their daily meetings, which began with complaints about business and ended with Pinnacle. Dezo gambled with petty cash from the family business and often lost it all. I disapproved of his way of life and uh, I admired my mother's sturdy, strong character. So I became a sturdy, strong character young fellow and my brother became a gambler. One of Kappa's first assignments in France was to photograph resort life along the Riviera. He spent all of his advance money in a week. When questioned, he insisted that he had to experience the high life in order to photograph it. He was so sorry, but his employer's Leica had been stolen on the beach when he went for a swim. Back in Paris, he couldn't get an assignment, but he kept taking pictures. He used to come and have his photographs developed in uh, my father's little dark room. And uh, when Bob didn't have time to stay, he just dumped his film, 
uh, in front of the door because he was always running around like mad. Kappa had absolutely no success with getting jobs from French editors. Perhaps it was very difficult to become disciplined. In fact, discipline only arrived with Gerda. Gerda Pohorelis was also a Jewish refugee from Nazi Germany. Like Kappa, she had been jailed for protesting against fascism and had barely escaped to Paris. Gerda was able to speak French and other languages, and she was always beautifully made up, and she was very vivacious. Their relationship would be stormy and complicated, but in the summer of 1935, they were simply in love. Never before in my life have I been so happy. Now, only the pick and the spade could separate Gerda and me. When they got back, they found a one-room apartment near the Eiffel Tower. I knew that it was the greatest thing in his life at the time. He was really, really... It was passion. Gerda introduces me to every editor and writes articles besides. On the other hand, she not only doesn't darn my socks, she doesn't do anything about the holes in her stockings. She runs around so much that she wears one out every day. She would go around and sell the pictures to editors. She was very persuasive, but not quite persuasive enough. It was time for a new strategy. And they decided they would invent an American photographer named Robert Kappa. Very successful, uh, so famous that uh, nobody could ever really get close to him. He was always away on assignment or at some glamorous resort on vacation. The name Kappa seems to be a play on the, the name of Frank Capra, who had just won an Academy Award. And then Gerda decided that she, fancying Greta Garbo would call herself Gerda Taro, and that they would work together as partners. Eventually, the ruse was discovered that Andre Friedman was making the photographs that Gerda was selling as Robert Kappa's. And what they decided at that point was uh, that uh, since the photographs were so good and they were getting published, that Andre Friedman might just as well become Robert Kappa. People say he created his own character, but he fit it. He created a character that took advantage of all his innate qualities. I mean, if you had written a character like Bob Kappa and you knew him, you'd say, the perfect person to play this role is Bob Kappa. Dear good mother, I'm working under a new name. My name is now Robert Kappa. It's like being born again but this time without hurting anybody. You can't talk about the war in Spain without talking about Kappa and his photographs, but very particularly about this photograph. It portrays the moment a man dies. And he receives death, as our poet Miguel says. He receives death on his feet, falling, but on his feet. He loses his life, but maintains his dignity. Fascist planes bombed Madrid with support from Hitler and Mussolini. Madrid was under siege. Madrid was an experimentation for the most modern weapons made in Germany. They bombed us when we were in line buying bread. They bombed us and we never knew when the planes would come and kill us. He was more than anxious to show the effects of the war on the common people. 
And the pictures he was able to shoot showed the population in a state of terror. The pictures he caught of the people on the bombardment are extraordinary. Of course, what's not seen there, but you have to know that he was standing there while they were running. There were no smart bombs in those days. And the bombs just came out of there in strings. It fell wherever they fell. Always the same. The sirens, the panic rush, the fracas of the bombs. Then as the dust settles, people go off to the morgue to see if, by chance, the sun the father, the mother that did not come home is on the lists. What did this woman do? She was certainly neither a Republican nor a supporter of Franco. She was a human being living her life, asking, what is the reason why this happened? What did I do to make this happen? This is the great tragedy. And that's what Kappa knew how to express. Kappa's photographs were published in journals and magazines around the world. Volunteers from all over the world came to fight for democracy in Spain. Gerda Taro, a passionate supporter of the Spanish Republic, came to Spain with Capa as a journalist. He taught her how to take pictures, and they worked together side by side. This was a cause they were willing to die for. They risked their lives many times to cover the fighting up close. In the aftermath of one terrible battle, Gerda said, when you think of all the fine people who have been killed, you get the feeling that somehow it's unfair to still be alive. In July 1937, fighting broke out in the town of Brunete, just west of Madrid. Gerda grabbed her camera and raced to the scene. You must have lost my Lasted for 21 days and uh, casualties were very heavy. What can I tell you? Two battalions went in and one battalion came out. A general ordered Gerda to leave, but she refused. Nothing could hold her back as she raced across the battlefield, taking pictures as she ran. My whole squad died, practically. And uh, one of them died right over there. The Loyalist soldiers began to retreat. Tanks and trucks careened through the field, bombarded by planes and artillery fire. In the chaos and panic, the Loyalist tank swerved out of control. Gerda was riding on the running board of a car when a tank crashed into her. She died the next day. Kappa learned of her death by reading the newspaper. Sitting in a dentist chair, he turned the page, and there was the headline, Gerda Taro killed at Brunete. A huge procession accompanied Gerda's body to a cemetery in Paris. Bom, gente, só para finalizar aqui, eu cortei o documentário quando a Gerda morreu, né? O Capa ficou sabendo ali, foi durante a Guerra Civil Espanhola. O documentário segue ainda, tem mais meia hora de documentário, tá? Tem muitas fotos. É lógico que para fazer o documentário ali, eles intercalam algumas, algumas imagens. Algumas imagens são de, de filmagens que se faziam também durante as batalhas, né? Os próprios exércitos, os seus cineastas, né? 
para fazer o registro ali do que estava acontecendo, etc., para diversos usos posteriores. E algumas cenas são cenas de filmes também, certo? Né? Como eu falei no começo, o filme é, é, Resgate do Soldado Ryan foi inspirado né, essas, essas as, as primeiras a primeira cena do, da invasão ali da Normandia foi inspirada nas fotos do Capo. É duro! Não é fácil, gente. É fotógrafo, de, de, né? Até hoje em dia, assim, qualquer fotógrafo que, que pega uma região de conflito, né? hoje em dia o equipamento é mais sofisticado, tira foto mais longe, etc. Mas, né? E as guerras também não são mais tão campais, assim, as guerras elas, hoje em dia elas são mais sofisticadas, com bombardeios, disputas de, de avião, etc. Né? Enfim, mas os conflitos, né? Oriente Médio, né? principalmente, aqui na América do Sul também tem, né? em vários locais tem, até recentemente, né? É, é isso aí, é isso aí. E o Capa é o grande fotógrafo, que pegava não só cenas <coughs> da batalha em si, mas é, a expressão das pessoas que estão participando direto ou indiretamente daquele conflito, das pessoas que sofrem bombardeios, das pessoas que estão na frente de batalha, das pessoas que né, as crianças, até os animais ali, tem, tem cenas muito poéticas, muito fortes, né? É, enfim. Falo com vocês aí na monitoria, tá? É, se alguém precisar do, do link do filme, é só procurar no, no, no YouTube Robert Capra que vai aparecer já. Né? No, no Amor e na Guerra. Esse nome desse documentário. Mas tem outros, outros vídeos falando sobre ele, etc. E se der o Google aí por imagens do Robert Capra, um Google, um Yahoo, um Alta Vista, um Bing... Não precisa ser só Google, tá, gente? Isso é uma busca na internet por fotos do Robert Capa. Vão aparecer essas fotos aí e muitas outras. Tá? Um abraço a todos e até a próxima.